Mitchell wasn't like the rest of the kids. If you're wondering about this young man, he's already been offered a scholarship before he ever played it down, or he ever played it down on the varsity level. He became one of the most decorated high school football players in America. He was to be football's future. I'm sure you all have an hobby that you enjoy doing, an activity, maybe playing cards, playing the guitar, checkers, poker. I don't know, any personal activity that you enjoy doing with a couple friends on your own. It's personal to you, right? But now what if that personal activity that you enjoy doing on your own was now exposed to everyone? What if it was broadcasted like right now, then everyone could see it? Would you still enjoy doing that? Let me give you a better example. You're a university student. You're choosing between playing intramural sports, less competitive, or varsity sport at the highest level. But you choose that, you know, intramural sports is better for you. You don't, have, you don't have that much time to, you know, take on all the practices, the extra work that comes with playing varsity. You just want to have fun. Maybe you have a couple hours, you just want to go play with friends, break a sweat, let's say it's basketball, you know, get a couple of J's and just have fun, right? But now suddenly you're told you got to play varsity. And you gotta take in everything that comes with playing varsity. Is that still fun? Do you still enjoy playing the sport? Or do you start feeling pressure? Do you start feeling added stress that wasn't there before? Is it just a game anymore? Or is it now something a lot more serious? Not too long ago, I watched a documentary named the identity theft of Mitch Mustaine was a supremely young, talented football player. And it is told that from a young age, he was placed a football in his hand. And he always had a football in his hand. But they, don't, they never tell us who put the football in his hand. You know, who enticed this love of the game of football? That is not said, but they just say that it's as if <laughs> he was glued on to a football but from a young age. But I always find that funny when they say things like that. because. We all know what happened, at least what we think happened. But that's not the point of the story. The point is that Mitch went on to become very successful, especially in eighth grade as he started varsity and went on to have a 61 and two record throughout his high school career. They only lost twice. And Nick went on as a quarterback to lead his team to state and in doing so won other awards such as the national, the Gatorade National Player of the Year and the US All-American player of the year which is basically the Heisman of football all that said and this guy was a very successful football player and quarterback especially in high school Mitch was from Arkansas and Arkansas only had one university so you can only guess what university Mitch was watching growing up the University of Arkansas the same university he dreamed of attending himself but to make things even more interesting, Arkansas decided to hire his head coach to become the offensive coordinator to further entice him to actually attend the university. Of course, that worked as Mitch wanted to continue the connection he had with his coach in college. But the head coach at Arkansas had different philosophy from his, uh, from his coach at high school. In high school, Mitch was used to throwing the football a ton. But with the college system, they had three future running backs that play in the NFL, and they're more of a run dominant team. So of course there was a rift between the, his head coach in high school not being able to run his offense and the head coach still running his own philosophy. It begs the question, why even hire this head coach knowing what his expertise is, is throwing the football and Mitch throwing the football when you guys know you're a run dominant team. That doesn't really make sense to me, but I guess if you have a top quarterback, you just wanna have him and not have anyone else have him. But I don't really understand that. But, but Mitch did have a successful little eight game run where from off the back, he won his first game that he started in and went on to win a couple more. And you could see the promise. Even the broadcaster had this to say about him. To have backs that can see it and hit it. And if teams want to spread out to cover the pass, that's when you need to run. Mustaine, who looks very comfortable, throws a strike to Williams, his teammate in high school last year. And a 42-yard strike 
And you are witnessing the beginning of what could be the Mitch Mustaine era at Arkansas. And he saw like he could he could throw at it. You could see that the talent was there, but obviously he didn't have you know the platform to showcase it at the University of Arkansas. So eventually, with the riff, with the two different philosophy, Mitch ultimately transferred and went on to the University of Southern California to have a better opportunity to actually throw the football. But at the University of Southern California, there was already a top starting quarterback, so Nick didn't start right away. And after that starting quarterback left on to go to the NFL, Nick was then rendered third string quarterback. Like, how does that happen? A freshman was above him when he had more experience starting at the University of Arkansas. It's like, how does this happen? So Nick went about four years straight without starting in college, without playing football. He went on to play later, like a bunch of meaningless games, and never went on to play in the NFL. And you wonder, how does this happen? How does a talented number one overall, or a future number one overall pick in the NFL end up not even playing in the NFL? Well, I'm gonna explain this one. To understand this, we need to go way back in 2006 to Mitch's graduation class and his peers to understand who was above him, who was below him, and see how they fared you know, in the future. Well, he was ranked ninth overall and only had one quarterback ranked above him. And that was Matthew Stafford, who was a quarterback that currently plays in the NFL. If you follow the NFL, you know he plays for the LA Rams, who are the defending Super Bowl champ. So obviously, he's doing well. And the quarterback below him was none other than my guy, Tim Tebow. Now, you need to understand that Mitch was far more talented than Tebow ever was. But somehow, Tebow made it way further than Mitch ever did. Went on to have a successful collegiate career. Not just a successful collegiate career. He went on to be one of the best college quarterback of all time. Or more, most accomplished, as they say. But Mitch never really had a stable collegiate career, never really had the chance to really showcase that talent he had in high school. So what makes, what is the difference between Mitch and Tim? Well, it's very simple. It's drive, motivation, and passion. Tebow was always supremely passionate, motivated, and driven. But those were not the same traits that Mitch had. Mitch was purely talented. He loved playing the game, but I don't think he had those same traits that Tebow had, that drive and all that. He didn't have that. So going back to the example I gave on earlier between intramural sports and varsity, Mitch played football more at an intramural level. He liked playing it for fun, showcase his talent, have fun with his friend, but I don't think he wanted to play at the higher level that Tim wanted to play. And that's what separated both of them. Because what's interesting is that they both played in the US Army All-American game. Remember the Heisman that Mitch won, but the high school Heisman version? Well, take this picture out. These two guys competed in that All-Star game. Again, it's just crazy to see that these two, they, they almost had the same trajectory, but one kind of separated from the other. And there was, you know, ironically, the one that was kind of less talented. But it goes on to show that sometimes, you know, the drive, the passion can outweigh the talent. But again, you need a bit of talent, but if you're supremely passionate in what you do, it can separate you. And now the difference between him and Stafford, for example, where I feel like him and Stafford are a bit more similar because there's those who were like about like talent level, they're about the same, you know, the arm talent and all that. But I feel like Stafford also had that passion and that's also what separated him. If Mitch was playing the NFL today, he'd probably be a bit of a version of Stafford. But unfortunately, that wasn't Mitch's case because obviously he had the pressure now. When you're not playing football from passion or any sport you enjoy playing, you're playing it out of pressure and not passion. And that's what happened with Mitch because he was expected to continue. Coming from a small town, they saw him as a, I know, a savior. Oh, we have Mitch, we have this great football player. We want to see him succeed. But he didn't want to play football at a high level. He just wanted to play for fun. It's interesting because even at USC, like his teammates probably would go party, do whatever. But Mitch enjoyed reading about history, about US Navy, Army related stuff. And that's actually what he wanted to do. But those two things changed. 
he was doing that as his intramural, right? And playing football at the varsity level. So those things were reversed, right? But they shouldn't, they shouldn't have never been reversed. So I think that's the difference in, on why Mitch never went on to play in the NFL and went on to be, become this successful. Because yes, those two things were in reverse. And upon doing a Q&A about his uh, documentary, I think the question was like, if you knew what you knew now, what would you have changed? And Mitch said about, you know, he said about this, right? He said, I enjoy playing the game of football a bit. Again, that was his word, a bit. But knowing what I know now and having the wisdom, again, that's his word, the wisdom, he would have went to the U.S. Naval Academy and went on to pursue a military or a Navy career. That is very interesting. It goes on to show that he would have changed things. Knowing what he knows now, he wouldn't have done the same thing. It goes on to show that he wasn't as passionate as he was. He enjoyed playing it, but he was playing it pure for the joy and the passion, you know, especially in high school. And that's why in high school he succeeded. But the more he continued playing at a high level and keep on chasing it, he went on to play a short stint in the CFL, but was ultimately never successful. Went on to play at a spring league. But he was even a backup playing spring league, CFL, sometimes the backup to the backup. Why was that? It's not because he wasn't talented. It's because the passion was starting to fade. The same passion he had in high school, that starts to fade. Then you're just playing it out of pressure. You're playing out of necessity. Like, that's not fun. Eventually, he retired because he wasn't going to continue doing that. And he was finally freed. And I feel like that's really the difference. When you're playing from pressure and you're playing from passion, those are two different things. And that's ultimately what separates intramural and varsity sports. In that same quote, Nick said, or at least I'm paraphrasing that, regardless of how his career unfolded, eight years later, he ended up doing what he is doing now and which is his passion. So I feel like in Mitch's case, or in most cases, we need to be submerged in circumstances, in our trials, to kind of find out what we want to do or what we are truly passionate in doing. And Mitch being a man of faith, God was like, Mitch, Think you really like football? Is that really what you want to be doing? All right, I'll let you choose football. If that's what you say, go on it. Play football and see if that's what you like doing. And Mitch was like, ah, as he started playing, he was like, ah, maybe football ain't really for me. I'm gonna go to do what I'm passionate for, Naval Academy, Navy, which is fine. Well, you can also shorten that learning curve by just figuring out, ah, am I really passionate for that or am I just doing that for the, for external pressure? So it can always go both but it can always go both ways. Do I need to get burned or can I learn from someone else that's already gotten burned? So but in either case, like he said, at the end of the day, he ended up doing what he truly wanted to be doing. And on a side note, I actually did do a video on Tim Tebow, which I spoke on about earlier. So if you're interested in knowing about his story, which is also very interesting, you can look at his video right here. And I'm pretty sure you'll you'll enjoy watching the video. So with that out of the way, I ask you this question. Are you playing your intramural sport? Or is it perhaps a varsity sport? Do you maybe have them in reverse? Or are you actually following your passion? Afternoon to talk to him about his much heralded incoming quarterback, Mitch Mustaine, who apparently is not getting the big head even after a trip to Hollywood. All these awards are built up. I hadn't seen the guy change. I hadn't seen his demeanor change. And that, that's what I love as a quarterback. He's not a big-headed person. He's not a high-ego guy. I love that about him. And I, and I think he's very teammate-oriented. I, I love that. And to me, that's an unselfishness. That's a giving heart. He has all those qualities that to make a great quarterback. More from Coach Matt 